Well, I mean, if you like, just take a take a look at like bottled water. You might just go say, "Oh, I need. I'm thirsty. I'm gonna get some bottled water." Basically, that's three companies, right? You 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 got uh, you got uh, Coke, you got Nestle, and you got Pepsi, right? Those are the three that make the bottled water. And yet you, but, but when people think of it, they look on, on the, on the, in the refrigerator at the place you're going to sell, buy water, and they may have 20 different brands. How, do you, how does that happen? Yeah, this is one of the things is, you know, I wrote about this in my book. It's, you know, I call it the illusion of choice. Right. And, um, one, you know, Americans, you know, we walk around, we go into the store and we see, all these different brands and all these different prices. And we think, you know, it's like, oh, you know, I, we study the, the, the choices each week and we try and like make, you know, we, we, we have, I grew up in a, in a, in a family, we, we, we clipped coupons. We had a, a real tight budget. We were poor for a period of time. So we made, you know, we spent a lot of time making sure that we made wise decisions when we bought things. People do that. That's what smart people do. You know, it's like, that's what, uh, and, uh, but the fact is, when you go to uh, all of the uh, to, in, to many parts of the store, there's really just one choice. You're seeing actually a bunch of different brands, but they're all owned by one company, or maybe they're owned by two companies. But those two companies are in cahoots, and they are working together to set prices. So, uh, Barry, what do you think the future holds here? I mean, uh, you know, if you were going to recommend a few things that you'd like to see happen. Well, what what are some ideas uh, that that uh, we might work on to try to deconcentrate markets and give uh, innovative uh, entrepreneurs a shot, increase consumer choice, get some price competition? What do you think we might do? Well, I think the first thing that all of us have to do, because we have been trained for the last generation, two generations, to see ourselves as consumers. And this is, you know, there's, uh, this is something, you know, as I mentioned before, uh, it's been written in the law that we are not uh, citizens anymore in the political economy. We are, we are consumers in the political economy. So the very first thing that every one of us can do is say, you know, what? I'm not going to think of myself as a consumer anymore. I'm not going to think about, is it, uh, you know, is this concentration of power resulting in lower prices like they are promising me? It's like, uh, but think of yourself as a citizen. And think of the, you know, as a citizen, what is the primary thing you want out of the political economy? What you want is freedom to sell whatever it is that you have to sell, your labor, your ideas, your crops. You want the freedom to go and sell those at a fair price. And if you, you know, if that result, uh, the thing, if you end up driving up the amount of money that you earn from your work, that will more than make up if any of these prices actually go up. And the fact is, real competition will result in lower prices. Mm -hmm. So we will have higher wages and lower prices if we think of ourselves as citizens and say, I want a market structure that serves me as a citizen. That's, you know, number one. But, you know, uh, and I, you asked us, like, you know, what do I see in the future? And the, the, I believe with all of my heart, I know that we are going to be victorious in this, the American people. I mean, this is a, a tough time we are in. This is an amazing amount of power that is concentrated in front of us. But the thing is, as soon as you, as someone sort of opens their eyes to this, uh, uh, this concentration of power, uh, what we have is we have all of the wisdom of the American people built up over 200 years in this vast array of law and policy on how, you know, how to regulate competition among ourselves to ensure that we produce every year more to share with each other. Uh, that, you know, real productive, constructive competition, we know how to do it. We have models that were, st that were built up over time, uh, uh, all kinds of laws that we can sort of reinstitute right now, update for the digital 21st century. We have did this for 200 years. We know how to do it. And we just, as soon as we wake up, we will know how we can move forward and 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 sort of uh, uh, take on these powers. We did beat the back the plutocrats uh, once before. Absolutely. I mean, if people talk about the first American Revolution. We have to remember this is the, a little bit of hidden history. There was a second American Revolution, and now going forward, we are going to have our third. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in to listen to Barry Lynn and I talk about market concentration. I'm going to leave you with this thought: Be a citizen not just a consumer. 
Citizens are moral agents. They think about what's good and bad, what's right and what's wrong. Consumers don't think about these things. They think about what's cheaper, what's more fun, what they can buy. As a citizen, you need to operate on a certain level of uncertainty. You don't know how the election is going to turn out. You don't know if fighting City Hall is going to turn out for the good or the bad. You do it because it's right. You have to operate on hope and hope that your engagement, your participation, and your vote will make a difference. Consumers, on the other hand, operate on certainty. The certainty that you're going to get your money's worth. That the brand you trust will give you what you want. And that you're getting the product that you want. Consumers don't have to take chances, but guess what? Citizens take chances all the time. Consumers operate in their own self-interest and only their self-interest. All they want to do is get more for themselves, please themselves, you know, shine your teeth, fresh your breath. That's all consumers care about. Citizens, on the other hand, think about what's best for the neighborhood, the city, the community, and the nation. It's time for us to think about ourselves as citizens, as self-conscious agents of our nation's best interests. Not just what can you get cheaper or what's the new flavor or what's the new whatever you can buy. Real citizenship requires something much deeper than that. 